Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, we're going to be covering uh, the toolbar. I'm not going to be covering Windows 7. A lot of you may be asking questions about Windows 7. I know there's a lot to know about it, but I'm not covering it this episode. The reason why is because I had a dream and God visited me in that dream and told me to use Windows 10 like everybody else. And the last time I listened to God, I lost a whole bunch of money in a Las Vegas casino. Therefore, I am sticking with Windows 7. So let's cover the first one here on this little pull down here, the pen tool. If you hit P, it pulls down, it selects the pen tool. What the pen tool is used for, if you move it over something and just start clicking, all it does, all it seems to do is just select. It's like a selection tool. So that's kind of lame. So what we're going to show you is what this really does. And this is actually a keyframe tool here. And it can also be used for compositing as well, which we'll cover in a, in a future episode. But for right now, if you move down over your audio here, you notice this line that goes across. This is a keyframe tool. This is, this is your keyframe line right here. If I use my regular selection tool, the letter V will select my selection, grabs my selection tool, and grab this and I turn my audio up or down by a certain amount of decibels. But if you want to keyframe that, you can use your pen tool. I will have future episodes on how to do sound mixing as well, but I'm just showing the basics of the tool right now. P for pen tool, you can click in here. By the way, if these are not showing, you might be at a specific track height that won't allow it to show. So if I hit shift minus, it brings my track height down. Shift plus brings my track height to a standard uh, track height. And by the way, it's the plus that's on the main keyboard, not on the numpad. So shift plus and shift minus will do this to your track height. And now I can move my mouse over here and I can click and click and click and it adds these little keyframes here. So now my audio can, if I, if I grab this one here and drag it downwards, my audio will hit this point, then it will turn down, then it will turn up. And another thing the pen operates with are, would be the opacity uh, keyframes. And those are not showing here right now, but if you click on your little, have to go to my little wrench here, click on that and go up to show video keyframes. This one's turned off. The audio keyframes are turned on, but show key video keyframes is turned off. So I'll select that. And now I have a keyframe for opacity here, which is basically which is basically how transparent your clip is going to be, which is helpful for, for compositing, which I'm not doing right now, but I'm going to hit the pen tool. I'm going to click here, add a keyframe, add a keyframe. So right there, I just basically keyframed a fade out because there's no clip below it. So it goes from 100% opacity to 0% which is completely transparent. So as I play through, it basically does a fade out there. And those are the basics of the pen tool. I'll have some future episodes where I get a little bit more in detail on those things. Uh, but I'm going to hover over this. I'm going to select my rectangle tool. There's apparently no shortcut for rectangle tool or ellipse tool, but this deals with uh, graphics. If I click my rectangle tool, you can move up over your window here and you can click and drag and it will start creating a rectangle. And it's added this graphic down here. Notice this on my timeline. This is what you're doing, going to be doing when you edit Edit, uh, when you're creating graphics and titles on, on, on your page, it's created this graphics this graphics file here. So now you notice it created a rectangle. If I go down and choose ellipse, you can probably guess what that's going to do. It's going to draw a circle type of object. There we go. And if you want to grab those objects individually, and you can individually you can select your arrow tool and you can move this around. You can click on the rectangle tool and move that around as well. So this is going to be helpful in creating graphics. I will have a future episode on titles and graphics. It will imp implement this tool, but you notice it put the rectangle and the circle in the same graphic in the same graphic file right here. As long as I have that graphic file up, I can create others and start creating shapes. In the future episode, when we get into graphics, we'll show you this. But I'm going to um, arrange for graphics here. And it will bring up this extra little panel right here. If I have this, this clip selected and go up to edit, it'll show each one of those shapes that I just created. Then you can go down and you can do different fill colors and change colors and opacity levels and start creating uh, graphics. So I just changed that one to red, select shape two, change this one to blue. And there you go. And you can start creating these things and then you can do other things like animate them and you can shadow them and you can put titles on them and a whole bunch of different things. Now I'm going to go back to editing here. And that's basically what the rectangle on the ellipse tools are for. So now I'll show one more little function of the pen tool. With introducing this little graphic here, this little graphic tool here, this is where the pen tool has an extra function. I'm gonna hit P for pen tool. I'm gonna to move up over the screen here and I'm gonna click, 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 and it is creating a shape. So I've got a custom made shape here, my own kind of shape up here by using the pen tool. And it's added it to this graphic file down here. Another thing you can do is you can click and drag and it creates a Bezier curve. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag, and you can kind of make your own amoeba style figures up here, creating curves, and then you can actually uh, fine tune it afterwards and move your nodes around. It's very much li like using uh, a Photoshop style tool to create extra graphics. So that's basically what those functions do under this little drop down category. The next episode, we'll be going over the hand tool and the zoom tool.